Hi everyone, this is Mahabeli from the American University in Cairo. And today we're gonna to be talking about gratitude journals with three of my colleagues from the Center for Learning and Teaching, AC. We were having a department meeting and people started talking about gratitude journals. So I have with me Nadine, Azza, and Huda. Uh, and all of them have different practices that they're gonna share with us that they do or they've done. And then we'll talk later about like how might you use this in your class. So Nadine, can you kick us off? Oh, sure. Hi everyone. So um, the reason gratitude is very helpful in, in my life is that it's, it's very closely tied with meditation and I kind of started it around the time that I started meditating, but then it kind of became separate from that because even the days that I don't meditate or even the times I don't meditate, I can also uh, do my gratitude journal. So it's obviously the idea of uh, you know remembering to be thankful, being specific with those things that you're grateful for, and it's a daily intentional uh, practice where you just bring to your mind, bring to your awareness those things that you're grateful for, thankful, uh, appreciative of the people that you're grateful for in your life, the parts of yourself that you're grateful as well, which we were just talking about earlier. Um, and the way that I do this is I do it with a fi with the five minute journal. It's a, it's a very uh, popular journal, a gratitude journal. There's an app for it. Um, there's also a printed one that you can, you know, uh, buy and, or, and, and, and have it shipped to you online. Um, and a really uh, uh, a dear friend of mine actually introduced me to the five minute journal and it's, it's been incredible. It takes, it, it helps me stay grounded, right? Because it is, it is everything, it is a daily practice. So it helps me, it's a kind of a grounding practice as well, as well as a gratitude or a gratefulness practice. And you just ba basically answer those five questions, three of them in the morning and uh, two of them in, in the evening. Let me pull it up and show, show it to you. I actually was able to find uh, an online version of it, uh, just a picture of one, of one empty page. So can you just confirm that you can see it? Great. So it starts off with an inspirational quote for the day. Um, and that's, you know, nice to, to have and it gives you like this motivation. Uh, when you buy that journal, they already have those quotes for you, but I kind of like looking for quotes that I would accept and take on for the day. So if I'm feeling particularly, uh, you know, anxious or stressed about something, I would find a quote that would be inspirational in that area. Uh, or if I'm feeling uh, very down, I would find something that's uplifting. So I like it. I like customizing it and tailoring it to how I'm feeling that day rather than just having a you know, standard or a, a generic thing uh, up there. Uh, and then you, uh, in the morning when you do this, you, you list three things that you're grateful for. And the idea is to be very specific here, right? It's, it's not about uh, you know, all those major, major things that you're grateful for. Obviously, you know, we're all grateful for our health, our families, and, you know, all of that. But if you keep writing that every day, it's not really going to provide that kind of, you know, substantial uh, benefit. It's obviously nice to be grateful for our families and to remember that every day and all those major things as well. But to be specific where you can write, I'm grateful for, you know, uh, the, the nice coffee beans that I bought last night that made me have a nice cup of coffee this morning, right? So it could be that specific. And I'm gonna also share a link that we're going to add to the page about tips for how to use this and tips for how you can be specific. Uh, and I actually got that tip from the blog post that was written of, of how to use the, the gratitude journal, right? So I'm gonna share that as well. And the second three, three things that you write is the things that would make today, today great. So what are three things that would make today great? And again, it's not really like a to-do list, but things that if you do those things at the end of the day, when you're closing the day, what would make you feel like you've had a great day or are you grateful for the day that just, uh, that just passed? So it's, um, it's, uh, it's that way, right? And today's affirmations is that you can you know, write those affirmations. Uh, you know, I am confident, I am strong, and you can keep writing the same thing every day, or you can change it up every day. That depends on uh, what you'd like to do. Uh, and then at the end, so that's the first three questions that you do in the morning. And then the evening, um, you write three amazing things that happened today. So you list three, and again, you could be very, very specific, very simple. And then, um, you know, I found that this particular question 
when you start with when I started with this I'm not gonna say you right because that was my experience you might have a very different experience when I started with this I found it really difficult to write things that I would categorize as amazing um that happen in my day sometimes I don't have amazing days or sometimes I don't have you know amazing things that happen in that day so it was so difficult for me to do that but then when I started writing those simple things or um you know a stranger smiled at me or you know I saw a baby laugh it it, it kind of teaches you to look for amazingness in your day it, it, so from the morning you know that you're gonna answer that question in the evening so you start to really look for those beautiful things to be grateful for during your day and you're then mindful or and aware it kind of ch changed my mindset that I became a lot more aware and a lot more mindful with those things and a lot less present with those negative things that might be happening during the day that I would fixate on so it helped me fixate more on those you know positive things to be grateful for and then that last question is uh what could I have done to make today even better uh, and that's always that's always so nice and it, sometimes it makes me kind of feel that I did a bit less or that I shouldn't have done one to three or shouldn't have wasted time with this I shouldn't have procrastinated but then it's also really nice to be kind with yourself when you're answering this particular question I feel like it's so easy to to, to do this negative self-talk and to feel like oh I should have done better I should have done more but then when you shift that 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 mindset to to be kind and to say and to say okay so there's room for growth tomorrow I could be a little bit more you know present or I could be more grounded or I could be I could move my body a little more so putting it in a, a bit in a positive way is like it's not I should have been um uh or I should have exercised today now I feel terrible you could just say there's room for me to move my body and to be kind to my body and, and to write it in a way that's positive. I could be kind to myself tomorrow uh, a little and treat my body well. And, you know, th that means that I would exercise or that I would stretch or, uh, and that what that would look like. So again, being very specific here has been very helpful for me. So, so that's the five minute journal. It really does take about five, six minutes. Sometimes you have so much going on in your life that I end up, you know, feeling the entire page. And sometimes I can only write one thing. And the thing is to, to remember that all of that is okay. Everybody has their own their own experience with it. And this is the blog post. Uh, no, not this one or that one. Oh, there it is. So this is a blog post. Uh, it's about tips uh, of how you can use the five minute journal, right? And I'm gonna link that as well, but it's, it's, it goes on and it's very, very interesting to read. So this is, uh, this is me. This is how I do my uh, gratitude practice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadine. Uh, and I love those questions. And I love how some of them are about reflecting and some of them are about action. I kind of like the one about today would be great. Like how to, what would make today great? And my first reaction to that one was sort of a receptive thing. Oh, it'd be great if my students had a good day today. But, that, but then what can I do to make it a great day? For us, right? Like thinking about how you could think about it in a in a more active sense, uh, and I like that because you said that about the last one, like what could I have done to think about, you know, action steps rather than blaming yourself. And I love that. Um, okay, Aza, you have a practice that was inspired by this book about cognitive behavioral therapy, right? I'm just going to pull up the the book so that I can screen share so people can see how they can get the book, and I'll let you talk about it. Yes, thank you, Maha. Well, the first time I heard about the gratitude journal that I've been using for a couple of years now uh, is in a novel, actually, where someone was using this approach to stay centered because they were having, um, like, they were going through a downtime in their lives. And I found it very uh, intriguing. And I know the author usually does good research. So I decided to give it a shot. And I discovered that this uh, actually helps like uh, the way I do it, the way it was mentioned in the book, I think in the novel at the time, it was just to before going to bed, think of actually in the book, they used to write it, but I think of it, I don't write it down, just write down um, the three things that happened dur during the day that you're grateful for. This could be people you're grateful for, uh, situation, um, 
a moment in the day, maybe, I don't know, anything that, that made your day uh, happier or better. And I started doing that for a time. And then I came across the book you were referring to, uh, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Techniques for Ret Retraining Your Brain uh, by Jason Satterfield. And um, that book is talking about different tips, not only for about gratitude, but different, a different range, like a range of different tips uh, that can make you uh, train your brain to stay centered and focused and away from negativity and so on. And they reiterated the same concept of uh, trying to uh, remind yourself of the things that got that were good during the day. Uh, like Nadine said, uh, they uh, it's better if they're specific. Uh, so the premise here was that our brain is trained to look for the negatives because they want to solve them, like a, I don't know a survival uh, instinct or something. So you uh, usually go to the negative to think about some more, to try to find solutions, ways to get out of stuff. Uh, ways to improve your quality of life but the brain does not naturally spend so much time on the positive so if you think about it if something um, very nice happened during the day you're happy for I don't know a couple of hours but if something bad happens you could be it could be a couple of days because before you can overcome it so uh, the book was saying that we should train our brain to spend more time on the positive uh, one way of doing that is the gratitude journal and the author actually recommended like the the novel author um, they recommended that you write it down so you can have a, a notebook somewhere to go back to when you're feeling down so on the days where you really can think of nothing positive and you're really drained you can go back to the written notes and go through them and remember what good things had happened that maybe now you cannot think of or how strong you were and now you're feeling very weak so uh, there is merit in writing these points down so this is one thing, thinking about the positive. I usually do it towards the, the end of the day to help me um, like have a more um, peaceful sleep, if you will, and go to bed uh, feeling um, uh, like energized, not energized. You don't want to have energy when you're going to bed, but maybe more at peace and more positive when you're going to bed. Another thing the book mentioned was, uh, and I saw this happening, when you train your brain to do this, even through the small exercise, it starts looking for positive things during the day. So I. I'm trying to practice this mindfulness too. So now, because I know at the end of the day, I will try to uh, capture the three or more uh, positive things that happened. I'm going through the day looking for them, right? Because I don't want to be there at the end of the day, empty handed and not being able to think of anything that I appreciated. So I stop at things that I like during the day and think, ah, this is positive. This is definitely going on my list. So this has been helpful, not only for my gratitude journal, but making the days seem more meaningful in and of them themselves. Like it, it's made me more mindful of the positive things that happen. And I do try to stay more focused on them and spend more time with them. And um, one last point I would like to mention based on the book is celebrating the small wins. So uh, you should have a, like a few targets every day, maybe um, very small if you want. And then if, if, you pull, if you pull them through, if they happen, you stop there and you celebrate. Doesn't have to, doesn't, uh, doesn't have to be buying yourself cake, but just stopping there and saying, I made it. And this is definitely going on my list of positive things for today. So gratitude for the things you've done in addition to, added, uh, to gratitude for the things uh, that happened that day. So I think this summarizes it. And uh, we will include the link to the Cognitive Behavioral Therapy book in the resources. Uh, thank you, Maha. Thank you so much, Alza. And I, and I like also the, the idea of, because I remember you said this uh, before we were recording about going back on a bad day, going back to other pages in your journal to remember some positive things and how that can help you through. Um, and I can, I, I'm really imagining this like during the pandemic where I think especially young people are not seeing a lot of positives. I'm imagining that if they were doing a lot of this uh, practice, it would help. It will help me, of course, too. Uh, but thinking that maybe young people are also sometimes like really pissed off at what's happening right now. Um, so. Hoda, you have something that's not a gratitude journal per se, but some kind of practice that's also helpful and helps with positivity, right? Yeah, but, but before that one, um, building on what Aza was just saying around, you know, these little positive things that happen. Um, I was just remembering now a podcast I had listened to on This American Life, and we can add the link to that podcast. Uh, it's a short book of poetry written by an author called Ross Gay. It's called The Book of Delights. And he spent a year, I think, of his life, a very difficult year of his life, pre-pandemic, reflecting on a daily delight. And 
I, I really like how, um, you know, the word delight is very intriguing because I never thought of it that way until I listened to how he's framed it. And the examples he gives in the book are very, very small things like, you know, uh, the sun was shining in a particular way and reflecting off the water and, you know, very, very, th very small things that you would never um, think of as delightful until he drew my attention to it. So it would be like uh, the way my son, you know, looked at me when I, you know, brought him, you know, uh, a cupcake or, uh, you know, the way um, someone, um, you know, thanked me for, you know, letting them cross the street when I slowed down when, you know, I was driving today. There are such small little things, but it made you feel so good that you could, you know, pinpoint that something positive happened. And they're really, really small things. Uh, so that's a great podcast to listen to and it directed me to his book which is available on audible actually and, and uh, he has a beautiful voice he uh, narrates himself so it's a very nice inspirational uh book to listen to and and also very grounded in you know concrete examples of small delights um and then it encouraged me to start and i did this for a while actually to list instead of things i was grateful for things that delighted me and uh it just amazed me you know very little things like um you know, my husband was on time or, <laughs> you know, uh, he, he, you know, he, he, he was said he, he would do something and he actually did it. It was delightful. You know, these little things that, you know, uh, <laughs> make you, I hope he doesn't hear this recording, uh, but whatever. So um, these kinds of things that make you feel good um, and they stay with you much longer than you would expect. They're so small, but when you focus on them, they stay for longer moments. They can sometimes stay for days when, when you focus on them. Uh, so that was really, um, really uh, very, very useful. And it's a very simple practice, very similar to what Nadine mentioned. It just takes a few moments. Um, the other practice that I found very useful uh, that maybe takes a little more focus and, and, and uh, uh, I would say not time, but a dedicated mind space uh, is this radical self-compassion, uh, free-flowing reflection uh, that was uh, that I that I was introduced to when I started listening into um, Dr. Stacy Thomas, who has a, a an Instagram page. She runs a weekly kinds of reflections, guest speakers. Uh, she brings in all sorts of very interesting content, um, access to conferencing, all sorts of things. But you know, she's, it's a really, really nice resource. I, I like um, you know, what she shares with her community. And one of them was this free flowing um, growing forward journal um, where she encourages you to, um, first of all, that you can purchase her journal. You can also download it for free off her website. Uh, but uh, this idea of uh, journaling um, in 15 minute bursts. So um, a prompt of how you see uh, yourself as being radically self-compassionate with yourself. And she gives you 15 minutes to free flow writing and just to let yourself write whatever comes to mind, uh, not to stop yourself, uh, not to judge what you're writing, to be very honest with yourself, just whatever comes to mind and to not stop writing for 15 minutes. And it really surprised me that I was able to write for 15 minutes. That was the one exercise that I found very useful. Um, and free writing um, is something that I think would be very um, useful for students because there, uh, there are no particular expectations, there's no right answer, um, and also they can read it later and reflect on it and take away certain things that may surprise them. I personally found it very surprising that I actually ended up writing in those 15 minutes. Uh, and this idea of radical self-compassion was something I'd never thought of before or even reflected on for more than maybe 30 seconds. So to have those 15 minutes to think about that. Um, so those are the two kinds of practices in addition to the great uh, ideas Nadine and Azza shared um, that I think maybe would be useful um, to share with students and, uh, and faculty even for their own, own practice to help keep us centered and moving forward. Because I think we have another year of <laughs> Of, uh, of what we're experiencing. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna be ending soon. <laughs> Thank you. But I really liked about, I really like that the radical journal, like I just heard about it uh, from you and I'm planning, like I'm, I'm looking around at the printer and I'm like, I'm gonna print this. <laughs> Cause I haven't, I haven't done 
guided reflection journaling before i would journal just basically on what i'm feeling so this is this is really great i'm going to do that and i really like what you said about um how when you're grateful and self-compassion it could get you through those hard times and i i feel like it relates to a lot of what i've been doing with my gratitude journaling is that it really does help when i've been i've been feeling very overwhelmed over the last couple of weeks i've been feeling you know really uh, burned out and tired and you know just really in need of a break and it's emotional and mental and 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 you know it's it's professional and it's about everything and that feeling of being compassionate with yourself yourself is, first oh it's so 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 powerful liberating <laughs> I would actually like to comment on the bit you mentioned, Hoda, about the, the lights and capturing the lights in the day, because this happened to me once and it was crystal clear to me how you're focusing on, on what's happening right now. The small things can totally change your mood. So I was, when we used to go to campus, like um, physically go to campus, and I was trying to get this sandwich before leaving and the bus time was approaching and the line was long and I was very stressed out, feeling I have to do it now or maybe I should just leave the money and paid, I paid and go. And then uh, for a moment, I focused with the breeze. There was a nice breeze at the time. And the sun was just, <laughs> the amount of sun was about right. It was not too strong. And there was someone playing music in the distance. And I just focused on that unintentionally. It was not a plan. And then all of a sudden, I realized they've been calling my number several times and I didn't even hear it. So all the stress and waiting and anxiety to get it done with and, and get through this and not miss anything was gone. And in its place was this delight. Really, I, I did experience this um, surprising delight in my surroundings. Although nothing big was happening, it's just the small things you were talking about. And it really uh, changed my mood. And then I took my food and I left feeling like much, much better. And I would have missed my food if they hadn't called my number several times. So I think it really works focusing on the small delights, on the happy, pleasant things. Uh, so yeah, so I wanted to to add my vote to yours on, on this one, that this really helps. If you focus on the small delights, it really can change things around. I was thinking about, I'm going back to this thinking about how useful it is to do it for yourself, but also how useful it is to sometimes share it. And I'm trying to think about how to do this in my own course. So I'd like to brainstorm that with you. So I was thinking, for example, uh, the other day we were in this not a very beautiful part of town. I think there was a building that they that had just gone down, but there were some puppies there and they were playing with each other. And my daughter, my husband had gone to get my daughter from her ballet class and I took a video of it. And I was thinking about, then I could share that with her or I saw like butterflies the other day. And if you take a video of it, then you can share that delight with other people. And I guess that's what a lot of YouTube is based on, right? Cat and dog delight videos that you share with other people and they help other people too. So you're capturing that moment. Like there's something about being in the moment where you don't think about capturing it. Of course, there's so much value in that because I think we overdo the capturing part. But I also think there might be value in occasionally, like once a week, someone from class shares something like that, either a story of, yeah, my husband did what he was supposed to do or something, or something that's actually a visual that they can share with other people. Um, there's also some stuff that I realized I share on Twitter, like when I'm really happy that a student said something, uh, I share that on Twitter, but I also share a lot of negative stuff that makes me angry. So I'm just thinking about how do I balance that? I, I mean, it's important to share things that make you angry too, because that's, it's important not to forget that, but there's so much value also in sharing the positive. Uh, if it's, it might help other people to notice as well. So I'm just trying to think about how do you sort of, I feel so positive just being in this meeting with you guys. Like we never actually sit and do this, right? Um, so what other thoughts do you guys have about this? I, I'm thinking how um, a lot because I have I have college age students and uh, how they often struggle with filtering through a lot of the noise that is around them, um, and, uh, and and sometimes um, maybe you know especially this idea of focusing on a simple delight, maybe encouraging them to like you said maybe one or two students could share something that is just so mediocre or so so random or you know it might help them realize that you know there's a lot of noise around them and there's also a lot of very sweet kind of moments that um that maybe they're not seeing because they're so focused with the noise and and uh, the age that they're at and again this comes from being mother mother slash educator 
um, they they get so focused in the noise and and uh, their friends and their social lives and social media and whatever and they they really don't stop to see um see where the enjoyment is in the learning itself um so i don't know it's 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 interesting to to think of how these how can you frame these kinds of practices in a way that would um be welcoming and would encourage students in this particular age. Um, we were talking before we started recording, you know, how do you introduce it to them so that they don't, it doesn't come off as it being, you know, lame or, or something that they can't engage with or they can't um, recognize as being a value um, by experiencing it maybe, or by modeling it to them or by um, immersing them in something, um, having them reflect on it afterwards. So, I mean, the, the, the idea we were thinking about earlier was this letter to future students uh, at the end uh, or even near the end of the course and have them, you know, maybe structure some particular prompts that have them stop, you know, what was a memorable moment in the course where you felt connected to your peers or what's a, a memorable moment to maybe frame it around memorable moments um, that they may, you know, stop for a minute and, and work through the noise. Um, that's one idea, maybe. Maybe a question at the beginning of class, Yamaha, the five minutes where you wait for everyone to come, uh, where people have to say, uh, well, not have, Yanni, but uh, uh, like try to think of things uh, that, that relate to their lives in the curriculum, like either to the future practice or their lives as personal lives, like the development or something they're happy about that made them better able to put in the effort. Uh, to get through one assessment or assignment in the course, or even just come to campus on time. Um, I think I'm, I'm betting that at least in class, one or, two, one or two students would be willing to share, even if it starts with the personal, like uh, what's the happiest thing that happened to you yesterday, or one thing you're grateful for, or one thing you're proud of yourself for. And once these start talking, others may be encouraged during the first five minutes of class. I'm thinking, and with time, this could build like the habits of, of thinking this way and it catches up with you. I've tried it like after a while your brain just does it on its own. So um, I'm thinking this could be a good use of the first five minutes of class time. I agree, Asda. And I think, I think that one of the key things you're talking about here is that it doesn't have to be something everyone has to do every time. So just to make it authentic so that someone isn't like forced or they've had a really, really horrible day to be forced early on before they become used to it. And I think as they get used to it, as you're saying, even on a bad day, you notice uh, positive things. This reminds me of the day my father passed away. I was pregnant. I was six months pregnant and my daughter in my womb was kicking. And it was such a beautiful moment because it was like, I just experienced death, but there was this sign of life, like right with me in that moment. Um, and so that, that was something I was really grateful for that day. And I think I noticed it, but I think that was the pregnancy hormones <laughs> that makes you notice those things. Uh, but I, I think actually that's probably a good example to tell students, like even on one of the worst days of your life, there can be something that you're so grateful for. Yeah, yeah. no, I agree with that. And um, it's, it's also, because that's what you just described is, is actually a big moment. It's a big, meaningful, uh, impactful, experience and i really like how we there's a spectrum between paying attention to those very little things of you know how it's shadow of a tree is, is and the sun and what Aza was explaining you know that breeze and those big moments and how you remember to be present with yourself and present within that moment and and this is the the, the one of the best things that I really like about gratitude is it takes you completely out of the past it pulls you out of the past and it pulls you out of the future just puts you in the present so it, it pulls you out of you know all those you know um you know failures and and past uh, experiences and grief and and all of those what ifs and it pulls you also out of the insecurities and and of the future and the uncertainties and again it just puts you here and now for at least for the moment that you're doing this practice and i feel like just this being mindful uh, and and present and paying attention that's the power of gratitude and, and, and the power of being thankful is again, you keep looking for things to be thankful for and you focus less 
uh, on those things that you're not so thankful for. I mean, it's it's nice to reflect on them and nice to sit with them as well and to sit with those feelings, but it's also very, very powerful. And it, also what Aza was saying earlier reminded me of, you know, you, Aza, what you said at the, at the very beginning where you're, you know, you stop fixating on the negative uh, or on the not so positive things that happen during your day. And I, and in a lot of the times you remember to be uh, present with those things that upset you, but you don't spend a lot of times with those things that make you happy. That actually reminded me of something I learned. Uh, the word emotions, right? The, the word emotion comes from the, the, the original Latin, you know, um, uh, word analysis is that the E from emotion, it comes from the exit or exterior. So it's something that goes out, right? And motion is something that moves, right? So emotions are feelings that are meant to move through you and then move out, right? So when we are not very present with those feelings, we don't let it move through us and then move out. So we're left with those things that are in internal. And this idea of distracting or going and doing something else when you're upset or when you've experienced something negative just so that you don't experience the feeling of or, or live through it is something that could be very harmful for us. Nobody ever thinks that oh, I'm so happy right now, I'm just gonna go distract myself, right? When you're happy, you wanna go through that feeling and that's why happiness is so short-lived because you actually go through it and you, I mean, it's short-lived in comparison to those you know, unhappy times as, as I was saying. And, I, and, and when you go through it and you feel it, it moves through you and then it moves out and then becomes that moment where you're, when you were happy and then it's gone, right? And when you hold on to those negative feelings or sadness or grief or uh, frustration and you don't let it move through and you don't sit with it and you don't have this questioning observation feeling towards it where you're like, okay, how am I feeling right now? Okay, I'm feeling upset. What does that feel like in my body? how does that translate to my experience on a day-to-day -day basis and you do a reflective journal about it as, as also Huda was saying I think it would just move through and, and faster and you would just be present with both of these types of experiences right so I just wanted to share that and and those thoughts were were going through my mind as you were as you were uh, talking all of you now. I love that addition because as you were saying that I realized that a lot of times when I'm really 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 upset I write a poem and then I feel better and sometimes I give the poem a nicer ending, but it's just about getting it out. And so I think it would be a good balance, I think, to also remind students that sometimes if, if you're really, really upset about something, then let's talk about or express that, whether they want to share it with us or individually or however they want to do it. Um, I'm so grateful for this session. Like so much positivity came out of this. And I'm going to show this video to my students. And I'm going to show this video to a lot of student people before we even publish it because I feel like a lot of people could use it right now. Do you want to, Can I add? Want to say one yeah. last thing? Yeah, just yes. one last thing. <laughs> so I just wanted to say that what really drew my attention, thank you, Nadine, for bringing this point back. What drew my attention when the author was speaking of this point of, of sticking with grief, but moving um, like swiftly through the, the happiness, is that he said that the brain automatically does that for evolution and survival purposes. So I think students would it would be beneficial for them to know that this is a trick their brain is doing for survival and for a bigger goal, but they have to learn to overcome it. So knowing it happens to everyone, not only to, to them when they're feeling down and knowing there is a way around it, I think it's empowering and, and may, may make them more willing to engage with the positivity exercise because this is how brains are wired to do, like most brains anyway. And, and you can overcome it by training it to do something else, training your brain to do something else by focusing on the small things and that with time it matters. So at the beginning, what's standing in the breeze with a bit of sun and, and music, Naini? What is it? It's so small, but with time, this really helps. So I think like prefacing it and explaining like the, the, the concept behind it, the, the trick the brain is playing, and that, uh, I don't know, experts say that you can overcome it with, with small tricks. I think this is helpful. This will help them engage, I hope. One, one final funny story is that when we, we used to go to campus, I walk through, we have, we're blessed with a beautiful garden around our campus. And I remember once a colleague of ours at the center who, who now has left and is living in Germany, uh, he was looking out one of, one of the windows and he would watch me come into campus and I always stop and rub um, the flower, the orange trees and the lemon trees. They have an I, I take 
some of my things. And then another professor types of trees and listen to the birds and sometimes I'll record them. And then he asked me, hold up, why are you standing under the trees for such a long time? And stop when you start, you, you don't come straight to the camp. You know, what are you doing? So I told him what I was doing. <laughs> And he said, you know, that's, that's really weird. I never thought of doing that before. Why do you do that? I do start my day. I like to start my day with a nice smell on my fingers and I love such birds. And I, you know, I love it's the only taste of nature we have in Cairo. I said, well, maybe I'll start doing that. So sometimes when, when people are curious about, or they see you doing little practices um, and this may be with students or maybe with your own children, um, it's kind of a little, maybe modeling or something maybe can also be um, useful because we, we learn these things. I mean, I learned listening to the birds. I learned this from a professor at AUC who's all on campus, you know, listening to the birds. He's a, he's a very passionate about that. And I didn't even notice the different birds we have on campus in the middle of Cairo. So. Anybody have one last thing before? We it's been beautiful. <laughs> you know, it's beautiful talking to you all. Yes. Thank you all so Absolutely. much. Thank it's you so for sharing that with us. I do the same thing with the geranium tree. And sometimes like I just like get a tiny little leaf with me into the office. Yeah. And during the day I'll be smelling it. So I love oh, it. The that's kind of nice. Beautiful. I like that. Yeah, no. If we have geranium, you have to show me where those trees are on campus. <laughs> oh, well, I know exactly where they are. And there are so many. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right and on that note i i know everyone has meetings afterwards so thank you so much for today uh i'm so grateful that this is one of the first uh winter set of uh resources i'm adding uh, and i'm looking forward to sharing with a lot of people inshallah thank you bye bye great thank you thank, thank you everyone